All right, everybody, welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Kieran Anderson, and today we have Matt Fueo on. How's it going? It's going good, man. How y'all doing? Good. So uh, where are you from, dude? What's your story? Yeah, yeah. I'm from Sarasota, Florida. I've uh, been fishing the Siesta Key in Sarasota area, as well as Longboat, Bradenton, Tampa Bay area for oh, over 20 years now. Uh, redfish, snook, trout, tarpon, we do it all. Uh, inshore, nearshore species, you know, from triple tail to kingfish to cobias, sharks on the beach, all kinds of really cool, fun fighting fish that uh, we get to catch daily. All right, I'm a West Coast boy, so you're going to have to tell me what triple tail is. So triple tail are this prehistoric looking uh, dinosaur fish. I mean, they are like really armor plated. One of the best tasting fish that we have in the ocean. Uh, A real customer favorite when it comes to uh, the way that they have to catch them as well. Because what you usually will see them is sitting on a crab trap line or on a buoy. uh, And they'll just be floating there like like a piece of grass or like a weed mat just sitting there. And you've got to present your bait perfectly. You got to line it up with the wind, the tide. Uh, and then, of course, you know, make sure you get the hook set right because as soon as that guy hits, he's going to run right down toward the crab trap and try to wrap you up. But again, one of the best tasting fish. So we uh, we get them, you know, pretty much from October all the way through February. And, uh, and, and they are all over the crab traps, anywhere from, you know, 12 to 15 inches upwards to 12 to 15 pounds. So we do get some really, really nice ones. Yeah. So they're pretty hard to catch, though. They are hard to catch. They're they are a challenge. I, I uh, some of this gray hair here from Triple Tail. <laughs> they uh, they definitely will give you a run for your money. And what's and you know what's cool about them is you'll drive by and as you pass them you'll be like you'll see a buoy. You'll drive by them and they'll shoot down. So you actually come back around on them and then pres you know present your bait. But you gotta again like I said have that wind at your back. You know the tide's got to be flowing right so that your bait drifts by the the crab trap buoy just perfect. And uh, and they usually they'll usually eat for you. But they can be finicky. Uh, we throw shrimp. We throw different bait at them like a white bait we've thrown uh scraps at them like a chunk of squid even they are pretty hungry critters so anything that floats by their face they're going to eat all right so this is a is this it triple tail that's a triple tail that's a good one it's on my boat (laughs) yeah it looks like one of mine but that is a good one uh you know we get we get some really nice ones and uh and that's that's a that's a great keeper size right there that's about a 25 26 (laughs) incher and then that's that's a great fish so you, you have your own charter business. Correct. Yeah, I own a, a company called Real Tight Fishing Charters. Uh, we're based out of Siesta Key, um, you know, Sarasota, Siesta Key, but we, we operate daily. Um, I've got three boats that are operating every day right now. Uh, we've got five boats in total, but three of them are operating daily, and uh, it's a super uh, productive business as far as, you know, fish catching goes. We're doing trout and redfish and snook every day. Um, a lot of snappers, a lot of sheep's head. We just got out of sheep's head season, so that just finished up uh, on the last moon. But uh, it's it's fun. You know, the guests really enjoy coming out for our four- and six-hour trips and catching a ton of fish, bringing some home to the, to, the, to the rest of the family or taking it to the restaurant. They have it prepared up at a few places, so it's cool. Been doing it for a while. How did you, how'd you get into the charter business? Um, I got into the charter business over 20 years ago. Um, I was uh, just fishing with some buddies, one of my really good friends, and um, I was a baseball player. I was an athlete. I wanted to be on ESPN playing baseball, and I followed this guy, Jose Wahebi, and, you know, I was like, he was my idol, and I, I, I wanted, I aspired to be just like him, and uh, he was a great, you know, conservationist and, and just a good human, and I, I wanted to be just like him, and uh, I, I got into fishing more and more and more, and once baseball kind of was out of the picture, I got hurt. I was like, man, I want to get, be on ESPN for, for something, so let's try fishing. So I started out, uh, you know, doing tournaments, and then I just started working on different head boats and party boats and then different private charter boats, and then I started Real Tight Fishing Charters, and then from there it's just grown into uh, a pretty big business, and I'm, I'm very happy with what we've created. Um, you know, for me, first, when I got into it, it was all about creating memories for the guest and, and, and showing them a good time, you know, a lot of bucket list fish for guys, uh, you know, some older gentlemen that we take fishing, you know, they've they've made this money, they've done this, they've traveled the world, but they never caught a big snook or a big tarpon or big redfish for that matter. And so, you know, being a part of someone's dream like that and dream come true like that is really what like warms my heart and, and keeps me on the water uh, fishing every day, you know, and, 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 and putting guests on, on, on good fish and having a great time. <clears throat> so do you still do tournaments every once in a while? 
Yeah, we do. We actually just finished one up uh, over the weekend. We did the Pediatric Cancer Foundation Tournament. Um, and they're a company that's out of Tampa that does a lot of research for uh, for the kids and cancer. And, and it's it's a great, great cause. But we do a lot of those kind of tournaments, you know, we're just some fun tournaments here and there. Um, we still do some of the, uh, the tarpon tournaments as well. We're going to do that and kingfish tournaments uh, for some money tournaments. But mostly we want to just do the fun tournaments for, you know, that can help kids and help people get on the water and show them what you know how special the ocean is or it might be a last chance for them to really appreciate something like that so those are the tournaments that we like to be involved with uh, the ones that can help people how long ago did you actually start your charter business um, so we started it back in 2002. Uh, I started oh, wow. real tight fishing charters. Yeah. But I did that from 2002 until 2010. And then took a little bit of a hiatus from due to the BP oil spill. Um, we had the recession, the housing market here in Florida was just shut down. Weren't, it wasn't making too much money. I was a painter. I was a pressure cleaner. I was a fisherman. I was a bouncer. Uh, I did everything I could to make some bucks, you know. So once, uh, once that, you know, just got old. I was like, you know what? I'm going to join the army. I joined the army for four years, uh, went to Afghanistan, really got my head on my shoulders a lot better as, uh, and, and matured, uh, as well, you know, joining the army will definitely, you know, make you find out who you are as a person and uh, as an infantryman, you know, so <laughs> I was a recon scout, did some cool stuff. Um, and then I came back, I worked on private yachts for about three and a half, four years, and then saw that side of the industry. So I had the charter boat industry, I had the private yacht industry, and then I came back and restarted real tight fishing charters. And thankfully, nobody had bought the name on, on Sunbiz. So I got real tight back and restarted the business. And then from there, um, it's been awesome. I, I had a different mindset. I had a, a management mentality as opposed to an owner operator mentality. And so now I, I have a lot of captains that work for me. Um, I train captains daily. Um, so that's really what, what's been kind of a new, new thing that we've started in this area is where we have captains working for another company or working for our company, um, that aren't doing their own thing. You know, they want, they don't, can't afford a boat or they can't afford this or they don't want to buy a boat you know they don't want to have yeah. a headache but they have the dream to fish and they have a captain's license come to me you know because i can train you i can teach them um you know i want them i want them to be a, a representation of me but at the same time have their own you know qualities that they have about them most of my guys have great well, all of my guys excuse me have great personalities and uh, are super fun to fish with and that's you know one of the things that we really t try to you know, push in our areas, the family fun and the fun, as opposed to the hardcore fishing. Um, those days in our area are, are long gone. Um, guests nowadays are, are all about the family fun. It's mom and dad and three kids. Yeah. Maybe grandma, grandpa's coming out. You know, they really just want to make sure they're catching fish. Of course, we want to still be the best and catch all the biggest snook and redfish and trout. But really, it's more about having fun now um, and making sure that we're bending rods and, and making the kids smile, teaching them about conservation, teaching them about catch and release fishing, trying to help, you know, restore the fishery to get it back to the glory days of what used to be um, back, you know, 20, 30 years ago when I first started fishing. So, <clears throat> so with, um, I mean, there's so many differences, different species of fishes, fish where you live. Um, you're fishing for tarpon, like you said, and everything like that. But why, why specifically triple tail? And also, um, wh what are you focusing on trying to find them? Well, when during the time, the October to February, March time of year that we're fishing them, we are really, um, we're primarily going out there for some other species. We'll be out going out off, off the beach to go catch cobia or go catch sheep's head or go catch uh, some snook on the inshore reefs. And along the way, in transition to our spot, we are running crab trap lines to get there. Um, October 15th is stone crab season. So once the crab trap lines are set, you have miles north and south and sometimes as far up to 15 miles west of crab traps. So excuse me, these lines just finished a good breakfast. Uh, these crab trap lines are, are running all over the place. And so what we're doing is as we head out to our spots or to our locations, we're looking in our towers, we're looking down for these, these triple tail and using our towers to our advantage. Um, again, these fish aren't on every crab trap. They are sporadically spread out. If the wind blows out of the northwest, they typically move down, or you get the next push of them that are coming off the, the oil rigs and everything from up north in the North Gulf. 
So these fish are our travelers that literally push all the way from the North Gulf. They follow the, the, the winds down. They make it all the way down to the Keys. I've heard in April and May, so they just got done with us. So in April and May is their spawn in the Keys. And, uh, and I've seen some, some of the Silver Kings guys. Jared uh, Raskub is a great ca- uh, charter boat captain down there in the Keys. I've seen him in the April-May months where they're catching these triple tail just floating on the surface everywhere. So they are a migratory species that does yeah. come through in certain times of year. So when they're here, again, it's a, it's a customer's favorite, you know, a guest favorite. So we want to try to get our guests on those fish and catching those fish. Uh, you know, that's like a, they're some of their bucket list fish. And usually most of, if they know about it, then they're really wanting to catch it. If they don't know about it, they're, they're cool with a couple or trying a few times and then being done with it because they see how hard it is and they see how difficult it is to, to make sure your bait is placed perfectly and all those things that, you know, that attest to catching a big one. So, <clears throat> What are the regulations on those? Uh, so they just moved up the regulations to 18 inches on on keepers in the in our section of the Gulf, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's throughout the whole Gulf. Um, but 18 inches is the minimum. There is no max on them. Um, if you get a, the one over 10 pounds, and you're you're going to be really happy. Um, but they they at all sizes, they just keep growing. The biggest I've ever seen are some 30 pounders, and I've seen those up in uh, up in Louisiana on the oil rigs, and it is. So Super, super cool when you see this like doormat on an oil rig. I mean, it literally looks like a doormat <laughs> right. just floating in the water, and you're like, "Oh man, there he is!" You know, so super exciting. Again, it's um, they're they're a tricky fish because they they do get lockjaw. You know, it's it it doesn't they don't feed every day the way they're supposed to, and you know, just because you put the bait in their face doesn't mean they're gonna eat. So they uh they're they're a challenge, you know. And uh, I've seen a lot of people with a fly have a lot of success with them uh, because that presentation is a little more subtle. You know, they're not really plopping a big shrimp on their head. They're just presenting a fly perfectly, strip, strip, and put it right in front of their face, and then you've got your triple tail. So, again, there's a lot of different ways to catch them, um, but they are a crowd pleaser for sure. Are they uh, usually in schools or? No, sing, um, well, <laughs> I, I was about to say they're all, they're only singles, but we have seen them recently on on some of the the markers and some of the reefs um, stacked up in schools and, and and gotten ten twenty of them um, in a day. You know where you're sitting there catching them. Now littler guys, smaller guys, the bigger ones yeah. tend to be by themselves, but the smaller yeah. ones like to be. You know they'll they'll school up and they'll you'll see them all bunched up and and by small I mean from you know twelve to eight 16 inches you know so those are those are the smaller ones again with 18 being the keeper size and of course they they ha- all happen to know that that 18 inches now is the new regulated size because every single one of them that we were catching this year happened to be about 17 and a half inches we got a few keepers you know big <laughs> that's ones how but, it, uh, that's how it goes that's oh how it man goes. it's like they know that's like the word went out hey fwc changed the regulations guys let's <laughs> let's go hang out you know so oh, so again it's rad. it's fun you know we um you know the guests again they they love it if they get a keeper cool you know usually we're uh we're doing that side that chasing those guys down either first thing in the morning or at the end of our trip you know depending on the guests um a lot of guests have different skill levels and skill sets and also different goals some want to catch that one trophy fish and then some want to just catch a you know a bunch and catch meat and fill the cooler well if you got a, a picky fish that's you know hard to catch you're going to have a hard time filling the cooler with those guys you know so again we we want to you know make sure our guests are happy and do what they want to do or do what they ask us to do and 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 make it happen so what about bait or lures what are you guys using yeah so we use um a scaled sardine or pilchard we call them um you can use a thread fin herring um we basically boil it down to what we call a white bait it's a little silver bait you know white bait three inches four inches anything bigger than that they they don't really go chasing after them well you know again we'll present a, a small bait in their face um usually you'll have to cast past them and pull it into them into their face or if you can set up your drift properly so that the bait drifts right into their face they they'll appreciate that but a big shrimp whew, that's the that's a favorite for them they they love those shrimp um so you know this in the winter time we have some nice hand-picked shrimp um you know it's not bigger is not always better with triple tail um you know a medium a large is my uh, my favorite word um a, a large usually will will get the job done and uh and the size of shrimp so are those fish like tide tide dependent like if it's uh yes. incoming tide or slack tide yes yes so um on the beaches you'll you'll have a little bit more tidal flow that will affect um some of that 
<clears throat> some of that bite. They will they will feed on that tide on the incoming tides uh, and that, that we have in the winter time. They will they will feed a little bit better um, if you have a slack tide or a non moving tide. Just like most fish, you know they're going to shut down and, and not chew as much for you. Um, in the winter time, we have some nice big incoming tides, and and that's when you'll really feel get them in close, and you'll get them right outside the beach, and they're chewing hard. Um, those are the good ones. But you got to be out the first guy out out of the out of the gate to get them because there's so many boats that are targeting them at times. Um, you know, if you're out there by eight nine o'clock. You've missed the. You've missed them. You know they've already been picked. They've already been thrown on. They've already had five other shrimp or white baits thrown on their heads. You know, so they are they're shut down. Um, we got you know we'll get some in the middle of the day, evening time. I've heard a few, but but really that first thing in the morning bite is is best for them. What what do you use for a rod and reel setup usually? Yeah, my rod and reel setup is uh is, is a seven foot. Um, medium to light action. Um, I use a, a, a bull bay rod. Bull bay rods are, are phenomenal rods. Um, you know, core candle rods, nice, nice, nice light action tips. Um, and then I pair that up with the Florida Fishing Products, uh, the 4000 Osprey. And, and that size seems to really do the job for, for all sizes. You know, if you get a really big one, eh, you could bump it up. But then the problem is you're bumping up your leader, you're bumping up your hooks, you're bumping up all that size. And again, if you've got clear water and you need that clear presentation, it's very important to, to kind of stay with that lighter tackle. 25, 30 pound leader, uh, a small 3.0 to a, you know, one aught to a three aught hook. And that's perfect for you. Nice. And then let me ask you this. When you're when you're rolling up and fishing triple tail, um, I know some fish get super spooked out. Do they are they spooky fish? Like do you use a trolling motor? Yeah. So one of the first things that happens, so usually when you have this line, a uh, crab trap line, you're seeing them being set probably every 50 yards. So yeah. if you've got a mile that you're going to head down the beach and looking for these guys, you'll have a row that you can see. And you can see 50 yards ahead of you to the next one, so you can gauge your course of where you need to travel. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, head, we'll have the sun coming up from the east. We'll drive on the west side of the buoy so that we don't cast a shadow on that crab trap line. So once we're driving down the west side of the buoy there, we can look down into the water and then look for those fish and generally what will happen is as the boat weight goes by the waves of the boat and the pressure of the boat will send them down so once they go down you really got to give them a few minutes to, to, to recoup and come back up and feel comfortable so check that, what we'll do is we'll go past them We'll come go two or three crab traps down, look for a couple more just in case we see them there, and then come back up in a nice slow idle, and then I'll drop the trolling motor, and then I will drift into them with the trolling motor assisting me so that it gives me even a slower drift towards them. And then once I'm in casting distance of them, then I start to, to bomb baits on them and see see who wants to eat. And only one angler at a time. You know, that's a it's one fish. You only need one hook in the water. That's not a fish that you want to, you know, sit there and have three or four hooks coming down raining on them you know they're they're yeah. gonna get spooky so again we you know once we see them rise up on the surface and really what makes it difficult is their nose is generally like right behind the crab trap so your bait so they're behind the trap waiting for this bait to come to them and you've got a crab trap with a line in it so you really got to make sure that your bait is like going right around the crab trap in the right direction yeah. or you're going to get wrapped around the line so again it's one of those fish that really just makes it difficult for you and again makes it fun as an angler you know that's a challenge you know we want that challenge and especially us as guides um you know say well we've done it all we've caught them all you know yeah that's that's again one of those fish that can really you know humble you and make you and make you know that hey i'm i'm, I'm a real fish i'm a real challenge for you today buddy so uh they're 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 a fan favorite and a captain favorite are they a good fight great fight great fight they 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 dig down hard on you sometimes they jump out of the water they they uh and, and they change color um i feel like they they have a little bit of a color change from when they're sitting in the water to when they are in that fight or f flight mo mode um they you know they realize they're about to get caught they're a little bit angry they light up all green and yellow and they get these really pretty colors in them uh you know so it's really it's it's a it's a fun f fish to bring in and you're like oh man look 
at these all lit up and they've got this armor plating on their gill plates and on their on their dorsals their dorsal fins are super sharp um so they are really like you know like i said they look like a dinosaur they're like a, a, a prehistoric looking <laughs> fish it's so cool you know again i love them <laughs> yeah that picture i looked at i was like what the heck that thing's crazy looking yeah but. they got the three tails in the back you know the triple yeah. tail they, a new restaurant just opened up here in sarasota called the uh, triple tail seafood you know so i mean they're they really are starting to take a you know quite a quite a, a big name in the fishing industry yeah, how how are those for eating? I mean, you, what kind of recipes do you do? One of the best. Um, I'm I'm kind of I'm a, I'm a fish piccata kind of guy. I, I like doing my white wine and my capers, and uh, you know what I'll typically do is I'll do some panko chips uh, over the fish, and I'll, I'll you know give it a nice little uh, fry there. Not a, a deep fry, but it's a light fry just to get those panko chips nice and hard on there, um, and then serve it with like I said a white wine over a linguine or an angel hair pasta and. Mwah. That's that's the best. You can't get any better than that, in my opinion. But, you know, a lot of guys just do the lemon and some butter and throw them on the grill, and they flake up nice like a big grouper. You know, their meat is is super, super flaky and, and just it's it's very unique. It's a lot different than, uh, than you know, again, it's a white meat fish, so it's not – uh, there's not a strong fishy flavor, which for guys like me, I, I like that. I'm not a big salmon guy or a kingfish guy. I like my my light flavored fish, and that one is is one of the lightest flavors. So really, whatever seasoning you're putting in there is what you're going to get out of it, and and that to me is is the best. I see you got your real tight shirt on right now. How can how can people uh, book some charters with you? Yeah, yeah, you guys can check us out on uh, realtightfishingcharters.com, R E E L uh, tightfishingcharters.com. Um, we're like I said, we're based out of Siesta Key. Um, we always are, are answering the phone. Myself and my girlfriend answer the phone 24-7. It's, uh, being a small business owner, it is attached to the hip. Um, so we, uh, we, we always have it on us, and we always want to make sure our guests are, are having a good time. And, and we really want to cater to them from the, the second they call to the time they get on the boat until they even go to dinner. Um, we're making sure that they're taken care of. Uh, Siesta Key is a, is a really beautiful area to come visit. We just got ranked the number two beach in America, number 14 in the world. Um, wow. you know, yeah, so we, we, uh, we were number nice. one there for a few years and it goes back and forth between Clearwater and us, but actually Hawaii beat us this year. So Hawaii, Siesta Key, I'll, I'll take it. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely Can't a nice, uh, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And, and white, white sand, quartz sand that we have is, 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 is the most white you'll ever see whiter than the walls back here. You know, so it's, uh, it's really nice to a place, vi- place to visit. If you've got young kids, um, you know, it's, it's safe. It's very, very kid friendly, you know, so we like to we like to make sure that we we take care of our guests and and make sure they're catching fish and having fun. I love it. Do you have Instagram or YouTube or anything yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we're all over Instagram and YouTube and uh, and Facebook. We use all the social media platforms. You can look us look us up on there. Um, I update the page pretty much daily with uh, with fishing pictures and, and all that kind of stuff. With uh, some not as much videos, but we do a lot of fishing pictures of uh, you know different snook and cool fish that we're catching. And we actually just recently started a new company called Siesta Key Snorkel. Uh, so we're doing snorkeling charters as well now. A lot of guests that come into our area want to go swim in the water and uh, they wouldn't go fishing or snorkeling with real tight fishing charters but they'll go snorkeling with siesta key snorkel so we're uh, we're providing a, another service for the area that uh, that no one else is actually even doing which is makes it great for us we've kind of cornered the market in that regard to uh, being able to get these guests out on the water and we we can see sea urchins we see sea star or starfish um, you know different types of conks and whelk and different cool shells that they'll get to see um, the, there's a lot of different fish that we have in our waters too. Some different tropical fish that they might get to see underwater. Um, there's barges and artificial reefs that we take them to. It's not as much as the key style snorkeling where you have the live reefs and the live corals and all that type of stuff. Our waters aren't as, uh, the salinity levels aren't as high. So we don't get those types of corals, but we do get some cool, some cool sea life and, um, and sea fans and some other stuff that the guests love to see and stuff that you're not going to see in Ohio. So Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. It sounds amazing. I found it. Is this it? That's us, man. That's us. That's my girlfriend, Jess, on there with a big old snook. And uh, yeah, that's us. I'm going to shoot you a follow. <clears throat> Rad. Thank, thanks so much for coming on, Captain Matt. I really appreciate it. It's such a fun topic. And, and those fish look like dinosaurs, like you said. So. Really cool fish. Super cool it's, fish it's to crazy. catch. Crazy. It's crazy for me, like learning about East Coast fish or whatever. I'm like... I trip out every time because I was yeah. looking at that photo and I was like, dude, 
the head of this thing kind of looks like our halibut. Okay. Yep. Yep. And and even so for me, like when I hear about your guys' fish on the West Coast there, um, you know, I was I got to fish with a couple guys down in Boca Grande, um, Ryder, uh, as one of the Salt Life guys, yeah. and uh, got to fish with him, and, and he was telling me all the stuff that he does, and, and super interesting, you know, just the, the varieties and the different species, and, you know, and then when you actually have a snook, like, that could end up on the West Coast over there by you guys a little further south down in Mexico and stuff, um, you know, we they do come over there, it's, it's like, man, I want to go catch one of those snook, I want to see some of the fish that you guys have on your coast, you know, you guys have makos and cool sharks over there, not that we don't get makos, but you get a lot more of them over there, you know. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the thing in the tunas. Um, I saw some videos of the guys doing all the, uh, the spear fishing. From yeah. The, the bow, man, that is awesome. You know. So again, it's it's really cool getting to talk to guys like you about you know the different fish and the different fisheries and and telling them yeah, stuff. That's crazy. You know, it's cool. it's fun. Uh, hopefully, we get good bluefin season this year. I know they're already getting they're getting them a little bit south right now. So. We'll see. We'll see if they're going to start foaming up over here soon. Now, you can do a lot stuff. of inshore? You do offshore? Or what do you do? I do I do it all. Um, depends Depends uh, if my buddy's boats are going out or not. <laughs> so <laughs> I got some buddies um, like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, my goal My goal is to shoot a bluefin this year, uh, try to try to steal one of Ryder's spear guns and get one this year. We'll see there what happens. Go. But. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he told me he was going to have – he was going to try to – I think his goal is to get one on the – I. I on the spear, he he had done. He shot a couple or yellow fins. He hadn't got a blue fin yet, I think it was. But he, I know he shot some he, yellow fins. So and stuff. I know he wants to start harpooning. Yeah, well, that's what it was. The harpooning. Yeah, yes. harpooning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was his next goal. He, uh, you know, what a what a what a eccentric guy, man. I, I, you know, when you first met him, I didn't didn't know, you know. And by the time we left, I knew all this fishing about him, and it was, uh, He's you know, insane. it was really really awesome to 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 know that you know there's some other guys out there that are just as passionate about it as you are. I mean, I meet a lot of guys yeah. in the industry. Um, but you know, when you meet younger guys, especially, you know, he's a little bit younger than me. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old now. So, I mean, I, I feel like I'm a, you know, an older guy in the game, but there's obviously guys that have been doing it, you know, decades longer than me. But when you see that gap to the younger guys and then you see that passion, you know, that's again, what makes me just smile, you know, from ear to ear, knowing that there's guys out there that just love it as much as I do. And that's the next, that's the next group of guys that are going to be leading, you know, hopefully sitting in, in my position, you know, 20 years from now, um, and doing those types of things so that's it's aspiring absolutely dude froth and thank you so much again and um we'll uh we'll keep in touch for sure i'm stoked i got your instagram and thank you thank you yeah. everybody that's everybody it. listening in make sure you guys uh follow real tight on instagram or book a charter if you're going to the keys sounds insane Yep, so, yep, it's uh, a good time. Yeah, Siesta Key, not the Keys, Siesta Key. A little, Siesta little Key. different. Yeah, so Keys okay. is Key West, and yep. the Keys are from Key Largo down south. We're Sarasota. Yep. So, yeah, so a little. Oh, Sarasota. We get that confused. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we get that. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. We, yeah, a lot of hey, that's good that, good that I brought it up, though. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. it's all good. So, thank you so much for cruising on. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for listening in, and uh, we'll catch you next time on Above and Below. 